You know what that's called, kids? That's called a mixtape. Welcome to Come On Get Happy Hour, y'all. Once again, it's a crazy week. We may or may not have a new president. I don't know what's going on. But all I want to do is keep everybody grinning and keep everybody grooving. So what I did this week with my producing partner up in Canada, the lovely Mitch, Miss Judy Lewinson, a.k.a. Hello, Sketch. Then. What's up, Sketch? How y'all doing? How you doing, Stevie? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good down here. Yeah, yeah. Just this grooving. has been a good week for music. Like, just play songs to get through whatever's going on. Just play. I haven't watched the news actually since last Wednesday. Today's Monday. So I just try to stay on the positive tip, you know, every day, mm. wake up and play some good music in the car. I don't listen to news. I don't watch news. I like to make people laugh and make people groove. So what I did, I've been doing these these top 10 lists on Facebook. Yeah, I saw that. A lot yes, of participation it's fun. in that. Like uh, the other night we did with my son, I think Friday night, what's a good movie for a 12-year-old? I had 180 suggestions. I remember that. I threw a couple in there. What'd you put in there? I put in Back to the Future. All right. And I think, I can't remember. I think I suggested Predator, but I can't remember if I was like, is that Uh, wrong? Because I'm, in my family, we we watched everything. Rambo. I think I I put Rambo instead of Predator. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I saw Rambo when I was little, so. Yeah, that's, that's the jam. But, uh, um, and Space Camp. That was a good one. Space Camp? Yeah. I don't know that one. Space Camp, uh, where they all go to NASA on a tour, and then the shuttle actually takes off into space. With the kids? Yeah. All right, I got to see that one. Yeah, that, that was a fun one. one. That, was, that was one of my favorites. I actually yeah, we went, went to the... Florida so I could go. To, I was like, I'm, I want to go to Florida. I made my uncle <laughs> take me to NASA. I was like, I'm just saying. Just <laughs> waiting for the rocket to take off. <laughs> If you're in the simulator, that's not even a real rocket. That's a, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's in the playground. That's not you're not even in the space center. Yeah, uh, we went with uh, one of my favorites of all time that I hadn't seen, seen since I was a kid, which uh-huh. was the OG Bad News Bears. Okay, Tatum okay. O'Neill, and the and it's funny when I met Katie, my wife, her brother said, "You, know, you remind me of uh, Kelly from the Bad News Bears," and Kelly was the uh, the bad dude with the motorcycle. <laughs> like, all right i'll take it i'll take it you're like that's and right i'm a star yeah well that you know people were the kids were smoking and drinking and driving the whole baseball team and the, the beat up old cadillac you know and no seat belts i'm like that was my childhood it was really living jumping on your living. bike and you see you when the street lights come on mom exactly that was the rule right street lights come on you have and you know how street lights have that little flicker before they fully come on so you get that fl- flicker flicker you're like oh i gotta go oh, shit. you like book it all the way home <laughs> yeah. it's like, i'm here i'm here i'm oh, here oh my god you're gonna beat my ass <laughs> oh, i'm in the yard mom i'm in the yard <laughs> good times but i did this week's uh list on facebook was what was your uh what's your jam what's your go-to I'd say like three drinks in if you're out at a party or a club and it comes on like, uh oh, I'm about to make a damn fool of myself. Here we go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I put it on and people put, I said, well, I didn't really specify a club or the decade. We could really break it down. Maybe in future episodes, we'll, we'll do yeah. like what's your best jam of the 80s and 90s and 2000s or whatever. Right. But I just generalized it and said, what's your, what's your go to jam? So I, I got a bunch of suggestions. And uh, did you chime in on that? I did not. I did not because yeah, I was trying to think. I was like, club or when you DJed? Yeah, when I'm spinning, there's so many different things. But I mean, when I'm dancing out, anything by Janet Jackson will always pick Janet, me up. Yeah, yeah. But I like um, like Escapade, All for You, mm-hmm. Feedback. Mm-hmm. Those were great joints. Pleasure Principle. Pleasure Principle. You know, just they all just knock real hard. Just you have to move. You have to at be happy. Beats per minute. Right. <laughs> so, pleasure Principle. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> You're just like, this is it. This is it. He's like, yeah, that comes on and I'm, I'm over, you know. And then, it, like you said, different genres. I think that's why I didn't comment because there's so many, like, in genres, it's like if you play Action by Terra Fabulous featuring Nadine Sutherland, most people don't know that song, but when it when I heard it in the club, it was over. It was over. You know, and Bob know Marley. Is that a Canadian Little song? Because that doesn't count. It's no, it's a Jamaican song. song, and it counts. It rules the world. Are you sure it counts? <laughs> I was in the district of uh, the United States of America. All right. All right. Are you going right. to pass? You're in Canada. I'm trying to think. What other songs? I mean, old school Diana Ross. 
stuff that she has is like the, when she played the boss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a jam. What song were we were just talking about that 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 sampled? I'm coming out. Uh, oh, it's by Notorious Big. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he sampled that one. You know, it's funny. I was uh, I was uh, I was I was talking to John Taylor Duran Duran. Okay, a yeah, buddy of mine, and we were he was saying he was at a Lakers game and he heard Nut Nut Notorious. <laughs> yes, and he was like, they're about to play some Duran Duran, right? They're about to play. <laughs> My mate. And he was like, all right. All right. He's looking around. And it was Biggie. Mm -hmm. It was exactly. Biggie. And he didn't know that they had sampled that. Oh, wow. So they well, didn't ask, I'm not even surprised. Yeah. They didn't yes. ask their permission. And Puffy produced it. And he yeah. said he saw Puffy at a party. And he was like, yeah, mate, you know, I'm John and, you know, JT, the bass player. And he's like, all right, nice to meet you. Not like, thanks for letting me. Well, but I'm sure, I'm sure they got paid. I'm sure they were like, yeah, yeah, they still. always, yeah, they always went respect. back. Like but once, uh, one song I didn't put in in the top ten today. That's a, that's a jam. Mm -hmm. I love it so much. Uh, a cool and a gang get down on it. I actually, I actually recorded that and sampled get down on it. I did a rap to it back mm -hmm. in the day. Oh nice. Like Nineteen ninety. I can't believe you haven't heard that. I'll send you. I'll send you. That if track. you could send that, that'd be great. Yeah, um, yeah. Get down on it. I yeah, might so animate a music that. video for that. That's that's. But I put the bass line to another one bites the dust because it's the same. Don't, yeah. Don't don't, don't don't yeah. But um, dum 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 dum. Yeah. But uh, I sent the lawyer for um, I had an entertainment lawyer. Mm -hmm. He sent a letter and the demo to uh, Cool and Gang's lawyer and didn't hear back. And so uh, I put it. I, I did a demo anyway. I was like, well, we'll worry about that on the bridge. Mm -hmm. It's better to ask, ask uh, uh, forgiveness than permission. Sometimes you don't get yeah, permission. Yeah, forgiveness. Just, yeah. Go ahead. And if they see it sells, then they're like, I'm sure they're cool with it. Mm -hmm. But it didn't go anywhere, so they didn't. I wasn't yeah. on the radar anyway. So right, right, right. <laughs> but now, now that there's Spotify, who knows? Oh damn! Now it's I'm gonna re, I'm gonna find that track. It might be on one of these uh, cassette the, mix tapes. Mix tapes. So yes. I want to call tonight's episode mix tape. Yes. Because there's been an election. People are crazy, and I'm like, we've been having such a good time here during quarantine. I want to take three of my favorite interviews, three of my favorite people, and. Um, and we'll just put a little mixtape episode mm -hmm. together. That's cool with you. I like it. All right, let's do a little mixtape. So who do we got? Well, first of all, let me let me let me break this down. Oh yeah, let's do I the list. Do the list. Yes, let's yes. do the list. So again, uh, please don't call in any uh, auditors on this or anything. <laughs> top ten, because it may be leaning towards. It's fine. My side. I may have. It's you fine. Know. But anyway, like I said, I should have broken it down in like uh, genres or whatever, but I, I didn't. Yeah. But we'll, we'll start with, I'm going to do three rock songs. Because like I said, even when I was playing hip hop clubs or top 40 and had people dancing their ass off of the old school, I would still drop in these three and they would pack the dance floor. Mm -hmm. And the first one, I can't even hear. If I'm driving the car and it comes on, I'm going to have to jump out of the car moving. I don't care <laughs> if I'm on the freeway because I can't take it anymore. But but a good drunk person song, of course, in a club, Money Money. That's it going oh, wow. Like, yeah, yeah and everyone starts chanting yeah yeah yes yes <laughs> no, hey, yeah. but if i'm at karaoke yeah. i'll bust out some rebel yell or white wedding right yeah, those are those are great songs right. too all right uh another one you can drop down down and out down now down now shoot me all night long acdc okay yep yep you always drop that and then katie and i were at the sky bar here in la once it was uh -huh. closing time they played one more song I swear it was like a music video. Everybody in the place was standing on tables, living on a prayer because it's an anthem. Yep. Yep. Living on so a prayer. It's an anthem right. again, right? Everyone an can anthem. sing. Anthem. Yep. And it's one everyone's gonna sing at the top of their lungs, especially mm -hmm. a few of these. Sit there. Um anyway, here's my top 10 club jams that'll make you get off your ass and on the floor and make a damn fool of yourself. All right. Here we go. Number 10. You ready? I'm ready. I talked about this on uh, the E-Network once. We did like a, the 90s, whatever. And it was, whoop, there it is. Yeah. Whoop, tag team. I'm going to send you that clip to drop. Check out live the floor here. Whoop, there it is. Uh, number nine, which is one of my favorite jams, club jams. Track it up. Mm -hmm. This man is going to Black box. Mm -hmm. No one put that in the list on Facebook. I added that. It, that's, that's, a, that's a dope song. That's that was my car washing song when I was in Texas. That that's a party. Where the party at? Where the party okay. At? Yeah. 
Is that yep. Usher? What's that? Yeah. How'd that even get on there? I don't even know. I don't know. even know. Anyway. I remember the bugs yeah, me that have been played like nine million from one of those one hit wonder bands. Mm. Uh, play that funky music. But if you play it, yeah. yeah. All right. To be real, Cheryl Lynn. To okay. be real. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it mixes in perfectly with what? Best of mine. There we go. Yeah. When I heard today, I'm like, oh, damn, that's going on the list. California love. Yep, yep. Yep. Guaranteed pack the dance floor. And if fans of the show have been listening, that is the interstitial sample I used between interviews. Thank but you. But I remixed it. That's why I had to put that on there. <laughs> and uh, DJ Rock Bass. Mm. It takes two. It takes two to make it. It, 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 yes. It, 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 it. The, the 12-inch extender mix. It takes two to make it. It, 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 two, it, it two to make it. 20 right. minutes later. And this one, so, 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 and peppers here. Yeah. Yes. Push ah, it. Push it. Push it. So always and peppers it. here, and we're in a fit. Always killing it. Yeah. And this one goes out to my, my little man, Colin D. Cool Mike D. It's tricky. Yes. Run DMC. All right, and number one, I don't know if this is really number one, but I heard it today, and I always want to bust out some MJ. Want to be starting something. That's a good one. As soon as... Yes. Yep. Yeah, you hear that? Yep. Yeah. Dance floor is going to be packed. That's it. All I love right. It. I love Send it. Send your bad comments, your good comments. You don't disagree. You disagree. <laughs> don't disagree. It's all good. Well, here's like the thing. Said, we'll do more episodes, so feel free to, you know, drop a comment on this one and let us know what you want for the next one. Please do. And of course, I get, you know, crazy ones. People, people try to be funny, you know, um, mm. uh, two live crew, stuff like that. You can't. Right. On. You can't be playing two live crew. That, that's not going to. The only one was banned in the USA. That one used to bring people together. But that's oh, and also me. So, huh? Yeah. Huh, yeah. Huh, oh, so, huh. That's very Miami sound. Yeah. Yeah. Very Miami. Miami bass. Uh, bass. Neon lights under your car. Yeah. Just do that <laughs> All right. And they got their own sound too. Miami has their own. Yeah, that Miami bass, bass sound, like where it's just bass for like the first minute and a half, and just rumbling bass, different you know. different tunes. I was like, "Whoa, okay." Speaking of Miami, Ice Ice Baby wasn't on there. Surprise, Ice Ice Baby didn't make the cut. But anyway, y'all, tonight is the mixtape episode, y'all. You yes. see that patch? I'm gonna go my son's jacket, and um, I can't do it a specific drinking word tonight because mm -hmm. each guest. Each episode had its own drinking word, but please have your cocktails ready. Kick back. It's going to be a very, very fun episode. The double wide is going to be rocking up yes. here, illegally parked. In front of the I'm excited. <laughs> Judy Lou, AKA sketch. You ready to kick it? Let's kick it. All right. So tonight, three of my favorite people and three of my favorite guests. Uh, I do an intro on each one on the episode, but we're just going to break it down right now. One of the funniest com comics in the, in the game, writer, producer, uh, you know him from Don't Be a Menace to Society where I drink in your juice in the hood. Uh, mm -hmm. Sully McCullough, a.k.a. Crazy, Crazy Legs. Crazy Legs. Crazy Legs is on. And my buddy, my buddy from back in the day, and now he's blowing up on, I think, his 10th or 12th episode as the host of American Ninja, American Ninja Warrior. Matt <laughs> Eisman, yes. also on the show. He also hosts a show called Rescue Live, which is amazing. Matt's a killer, killer friend, funny guy, funny comic. Um, and this lady always brings the heat. She's all over the country. She knows cars. She's a, a, a podcaster. She's a supermodel. You know her from the Garage Squad. Uh, so we never know where Heather is. So every couple of months, I check in with the lovely Heather Storm closing out this episode. So everybody, I love this it. is the mixtape, One Nation Under a Grin uh, episode. And... Uh, Judy, a.k.a. Sketch, kick it. Thanks for watching. Come on, get happy, y'all. Enjoy this episode. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, y'all, one of the coolest guys and funniest guys. This guy, I, I've, I've been a fan of his since I saw him on the Friday night videos back in the day. He would just light up the room. That was my first and probably last TV appearance. I can't remember. Maybe I did a couple of public access things since then. But this guy is super duper busy. He's a writer, producer, director. You know him as Mouse on the Jamie Foxx show. Uh, 
writer for the Night Show, BET Awards. I want to talk to him about his uh, uh, his buddy Gary Shanling and Diane Lathing, and uh, a good friend of mine. I'm proud to call him my friend. Give it up for Suli McCullough. What up? What up? What up? What's up, buddy? What's going on? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good, buddy. I'm always thinking of you, man. I see Porsches. I send you pictures all the time, videos. And I love that. I love I'm that. I'm still looking for your car, man. I know. You know, it's funny. I saw, uh, remember when they were there was those floods in Houston? Yes. I saw a silver Porsche that looked just like mine that was in the flood. Yeah. And I was like, man, if that's my car, that's what you get for stealing it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> it's karma, you son of a bitch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Because that car don't float. <laughs> damn it. But it looked exactly like my car, dude. Same silver, same era. Car. Like, there was so much water, though, I couldn't see the license plate. If I saw the license plate, You're and like, it was a... Uh, yeah, I was trying, dude. I was like, I might fly down to Houston. <laughs> or swim, one of the two. <laughs> I'm still mad about that because when I was a kid, I had a bike. I was poor, but I, would, had, a, I had a paper route. Uh -huh. so every week I would save, you know, make like, you know, $19 a week. I don't know, but yeah. I'd buy some pedals. Yeah. And then yeah. the next week I'd buy some grips. And yeah. it was like, and so I'm sure you've seen Citizen Kane. I'm like, that was my rosebud, bro. Yes, my, yes. My bike. And someone like stole my bike. Your bike to Citizen yes. Kane. Yes. That was like real, real, keeping it real. But then you went highbrow with it. I like that. So it took me like a year and a half to build my bike. Yes. And then these punks stole my bike. I came out one day and I'm like, where's my bike? So to yeah. this day, if I find out, I'm still going to kick them in the nuts. If I Please do. Please do. So, and every time you know I see crazy, it, like when you're, you know, I mean, that was like the first like car that was like my baby that got yes. stolen. And I had parked it, you know, at the time I was coaching my son's basketball team. Yeah. So uh, I had basketballs in, in the car. Yeah. And when it, like, I parked it that night knowing I got to get up early and I went outside and you know where you park your car and yeah. it was gone. It was gone. And so and like, you play this mental game with yourself. And I ended up walking around the block just because oof. it's like, well, maybe I parked it somewhere else knowing that I didn't, but you yeah. still got to go through that whole process. Yeah. Dude, it was the worst. I can't even drive past that street now without feeling some kind of way. It's so much worse than a bad breakup. Where was it, Studio City or Sherman Oaks or? Uh... In the Shokes, dude. They got me yeah. in the Shokes. <laughs> the Shokes? They, do they that got me in the Shokes. The shokes. <laughs> Come on, they don't do that in the Shokes. <laughs> you know, you were on a list, bro. People were like scouring the streets. Yeah. They saw your car and they're like, gone in Well, here's seconds. the, you know what? That's, you might be right about that. Cause when I, I first- think so. I, I don't think it was a random I first, dude. When I first bought that car, you know, it was, it, I mean, it's incredible. It's a, it was a beautiful car, but you had to know, you know what I mean? Like you had to be, you had to really know what was up. So yeah. there was a time where, you know, I could drive it around. The people that would know would know, yeah. but uh, Steve McQueen's son sold Chad? his, yeah, Chad, Chad McQueen sold his dad's car in an auction in Monterey. Okay. And it got $1.2 million. And it was a 73. No, it was a 73 911S. Oh, really? Yes. What? yes. Mine was a 72 911T okay. with S options. Oof. So, and 72? You know, uh, 72, dude. And 72s yeah. are rare because they had the, the oil on the side. Okay. It looked like. That's oh, where yeah. the gas goes. Gas, yes, yes, yes. So people would put gas where the oil went and ruin their cars. So they only oh, did that one year. Oops. And mine was a that wasn't a good idea. No, it was not a good idea, but <laughs> it made it cooler. Yeah. You know, so anyway, dude, it's it's still my my son tells me every now and again, he's like, Dad, we gotta get you another Porsche. And he's like, I'm gonna get you another Porsche. And I'm like, Yeah. yeah. You know, he's, he's selling he's those talking. ties, man, man. Yeah. <laughs> Sell those uh, bow ties. Yeah. But nobody's wearing bow ties during a pandemic. Oh, shit, man. Yeah, I'll I know. A, you better have I a Porsche on layaway. Exactly. Exactly. But I I'll like pick you up in my Kentucky Porsche. We'll, we'll cruise around my Kentucky Porsche. I like that. The Trans Am. You know what I got? The, the Trans Am. You know what I got, my man. 
Uh, so yeah, you got some fire. Yeah, I got some fire. And and same what would you say? I've got two new have two new cars on the street, but I got uh, the the TA in the garage because I don't really want my neighbors to know what no, I got. Oh no. Do we had some sketchy do we had some sketchy neighbors on the corner? Right. And I was in the backyard throwing the football with my son about two years ago. And there were yeah. police helicopters everywhere. I was yeah. like, oh shit, they're like right here. So we went in the front yard and they were at those neighbors' house. Like, oh, gun, damn. guns drawn. They were in Dodge yeah, the yeah. Ringo. They were yeah. in police cars. They were like in Chevettes. Just like, yeah, like, right, 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 right. Yeah, right. You don't even know right. the police these days. Yeah, when like, you don't, oh. when you when you take out the Chevette, that's when yeah. you mean business. <laughs> And yes. that's why that's why the police are so afraid of defund being defunded because they're like, yes. oh, they're gonna try and take away the Chevettes. Yeah, you don't know what we got. You know yeah. the yeah. Chevettes. Yeah, let them yeah, let them have the Chevettes. Yeah. So I don't even like I, I'll take my car out. They're gone now. But I yeah. should literally take the car out of the garage and go that way away yes. from those neighbors yes. because yes. I don't want certain neighbors to know what's in my garage. Yes. You know. So yeah. I'm no, no, I get it, dude. What I used to do. Like, I remember before I got the Porsche, because that wasn't my first car, right? You know, yeah. you start with your, my first car was a Toyota Celica, right? Yeah. 71. Still fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. With a cup holder. <laughs> and how I got it, dude, I didn't have a car. Yeah. It was a cup holder. It had the cup Man, holder. I can let go. And then let go. <laughs> oh, I got a place for my drink. <laughs> but uh, I got years. like I didn't have a I didn't have a car. <laughs> like I was doing comedy before I had a car, right? <laughs> yeah. And I was emceeing at the Laugh Factory, and Rosie O'Donnell came in to do a guest spot. Okay. And it was at the time when she was hosting Stand Up Spotlight on VH1. Yeah. So I went on, uh, uh, you know, because I was emceeing. She saw me do like about four or five minutes in between an act. And she goes, you're funny. I want you to do the show. And I was like, cool. Right. <laughs> so next week, the, the following week, I get a call. The, the, I do a set. The set pays a thousand dollars. Right. Which is I'm, I'm, I'm winning, dude. I'm winning. I'm winning. <laughs> I am winning. I bought the Toyota Celica <laughs> for $900, dude, and had $100 left for gas. <laughs> you couldn't, and, and to get a drink to use the cup holder. What? <laughs> dude, you couldn't tell me I wasn't winning. <laughs> Money left over. <laughs> what? $100? <laughs> and a car? You got a C note? Thank you, Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> wow. You know how like back in the day too, like I was just used to doing club spots, but that was a TV spot. So like, I got I get paid. I get paid, right? So I had to put on for this exposure. For for this. Really? You, you're gonna put me on TV with my yeah. jokes and give me a thousand dollars. Come on. So so you know, so like uh it was a big deal, dude. So I remember I went to the mall. And I got a sport jacket, right? Oh, nice. <laughs> I got this. You had a left over. Uh, I got it. No, 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 <laughs> dude. No, that was investment to get the money when I did the spot. That was buy in oh, oh, money. For the spot. For the spot. Yes. Yeah. I was All like, right. oh, I'll. I'll spend $83 yeah. on a sport coat. <laughs> 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 so I got this canary yellow sport coat that was linen, right? Yeah. And I wore it on the show and it was a little too big, right? Like I look like one of those uh, old NBA coaches. You know? <laughs> little shoulder pads up there. Yeah, head. exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember Rosie said to me, she said, um, let me give you a little tip. The jacket looks great, by the way, but linen wrinkles on TV. And I was like, damn. I'm gonna have to return this to the mall tomorrow <laughs> and get my eighty-three dollars back. And that's why my price tag is still in the jacket. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, two weeks later they see it on TV. Like, right, right. Hey, hey brought, he brought hey, that jacket back. Hey, that NBA coach is doing comedy. <laughs> Man, he's really talented. He got so many jobs. <laughs> I bet he grabs a silicon with a cup holder. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> he balling. <laughs> He's balling. Dude, you know, I love that, that car. On me. Dude, I, I drove that car into the ground. I remember one day I was going to an audition 
and my muffler fell off in the middle of rush hour traffic, right? And this is how little I knew about cars. Yeah. I was like, ooh, I'm gonna miss my audition. Here's what I'll do. I'll let the muffler cool down and then I'll just put it back up under the engine. <laughs> it goes in there somewhere. Yeah, right. It just, oh, it'll just naturally stick. Let me just, it's like, I, like my knowledge of cars was like they were Lego pieces. Yeah. <laughs> it snapped. Yeah, snapped. right. I'll cool. hear the snap. I'll hear the snap. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm letting it cool down because right, right. Cars. So I don't burn I'm my fingers. Cars. Yeah, I don't know my <laughs> and mufflers are heavy. So yeah, no, let it cool let down it cool first. Down. Yes, and, and I forgot to I forgot to have oven mitts in the car because <laughs> you put on an oven mitt, which makes it easier to Ooh. refasten the muffler. Of course, <laughs> that's when you take off the yellow canary jacket and hold the muffler. Yep. Up. Yep. <laughs> was that was that after Friday night videos? Or before that was that was before yeah that was one of the first that was just one of those gigs where dude i was the right place at the right time emceeing and you know rosie o'donnell just happened to come in to do a guest spot like That's it great. was like it was great dude like those were just those i love those early days of comedy because it was just like grinding it you know what i mean like you didn't just, know who was gonna pop in you didn't know you like, never knew dude you, you never, knew. never knew like you just had to just you know, you were just doing your thing. Just have fun. Yes, you know, and yes, yes. And, and yeah. that's one thing that when I first, you know, knew who you were from Friday Night Videos, you would just come out and be smiling, and light yeah. up the room. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know that dude, but he's got, he's got the right plan. You hit the stage. <laughs> he's happy, man. So everyone yeah. else is happy. Yeah. And I don't know if you know this, but Judy, my producer in Canada right now, uh -huh. was, my, was my DJ at the Laugh Factory on Thursday nights. Yes. Okay. All right. So that's DJ. She know, she, oh, okay. Well, took it, took it, took it. Jamie goes, buddy, you don't need DJ, buddy. Listen no, man. Me. Come on. You just do comedy. You do rock and roll comedy, man. You don't know, buddy. I go, no, Come on. You don't need DJ. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, I kind of like it's fun to have a DJ. Yes, so yes. He's like, buddy, you don't to need add it. that energy. Yeah, I like the energy of the room. And, and uh, I think I paid her out of my own pocket because Jamie is like, you don't need it. And I'm like, can I, can I just have her? Yeah. If I pay her and, yeah. and let me just show you the yeah. kind of interview I want, man. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You paid her out of your, your yellow jacket fund. Yes. I'm like, <laughs> Jamie, I'm paying her more than you're paying me. Right. Right. It's worth it. It's worth right. it. Right. Right. all good. Uh, yeah. So, buddy, today I, I started watching the Zen Diaries a little bit. Your buddy, Gary Shannon. Oh, you did? Oh, great, man. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? I started watching it. And I got, I'm like kind of superstitious about watching comedy before I do comedy or do the show. I'm yeah. like, I, I don't want to be sad, you know, a little bit. Yes, yes, sure, sure. Because he was yeah, such. You want to keep it, yeah. What, what, that's actually a good thing to watch, though, before you're about to do comedy, because Gary was such a technician. Yeah. And he was all about doing the pre work before yeah. going to do what you were about to do. So. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, the, the first time I watched it, dude, it floored me. It, floored, yeah. it really is a fantastic documentary. And it was like, I was friends with Gary for 18 years, right? I know, yeah, you guys are tight. You played yeah, I met him. Tightly, uh, his basketball. I was in, his, I was in his, his, his Sunday basketball game, yeah. which was, uh, it was like Fight Club, but with better jokes. <laughs> uh, it was invite only. Uh, yeah. Luckily, I got invited um, and 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 passed enough the first time I was there to get invited back. Pass to Gary. Pass to Gary. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah, keep shooting, Gary. Keep shooting. Uh, <laughs> Gary's open, but you didn't pass to him. He's like, Yeah. No. No. Gary. Gary could shoot though. Gary would surprise you. Could Gary. Right. Would, yeah. He had a nice little jump shot. So uh, it was great. With the jump shot. Jump exactly. Shot. Exactly. So. It, it was great, man. Like that Sunday run, it was all these super cool people that I'm still very close to now. Sarah Silverman, David Duchovny, um, Kevin Nealon, uh, yeah. Ben Schwartz, um, yeah, uh, Breck and Meyer, like just a, a great bunch of dudes uh, and, and Sarah. Um, and, and it was amazing, dude. It was a great thing to have. The one rule that Gary had about the game was, um, you couldn't talk about the game. 
So, you know, like, we would really, it, it was really like fight club, dude. Like it really was this get together. We would play ball. And then afterwards we would go, you know, have pizza upstairs. And if there was, you were posting on, on Facebook. Oh, no, dude. No, it was like, it really was like this super dope secret society. And um, yeah, like, you know, some of my closest friends became friends because we played in that game together. Yeah. So yeah, it was it Did was pretty Kevin? great. I saw you were just hiking with Kevin and Helen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I met Kevin in the game, and uh, and and Kevin was hilarious, dude. Like it was so funny. Like I played in games before that. You know, you got to bring your skills. This was one of the the coolest games because you had to bring your basketball skills, but you also had to bring your comedy skills. So yeah. that was a whole nother like <laughs> psychological aspect. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You're like, do like, I, I talk too much smack? Or yes, much yes, smack? yeah. You got to find the right level yeah, of smack. Yeah. And it was, it was funny, like, uh, you know, I remember Sarah would clown me in a really funny way. Like I would make a cool shot or something and she'd go, Nice, Suli. Great. Great. No smile. I love how you didn't smile at all. <laughs> like you have your game face. I was like, whoa, yeah. I've never been shit talked like this before. <laughs> Did this Sarah is different. Play? Yeah, Did Sarah Sarah's play? got a nice little game too. Really? Oh, on Sarah Silverman. She can hoop. Really? Sarah okay. got some game. Yes. Yes. It's yeah. funny because I, I look physically fit. Like I, I love fitness. Yes. But I grew up like a little BMX punk, you know, like a uh -huh, punk. Uh -huh. So I don't really have ball skill balling you know yeah oh, yeah my son, we yeah. have an eight foot hoop i can uh -huh. like, damn yes like me now. yes he's like, ah, in his face but he's yeah he's 12 and he's like you know bumping me a little bit he's got yeah he's going through his legs i'm like yeah you know, yeah i don't even i got some comedy stuff i need to be yeah exactly jokes. yeah i gotta write some jokes <laughs> i got you're grounded do, man. you are grounded <laughs> <laughs> who do you think turns these lights on man <laughs> jokes keep the lights on right it's time to be out here <laughs> right my uh, my son plays. Uh, he's a sophomore in high school now. Uh -huh. And last year, before COVID, he played on the high school team. And it's and it's interesting. Before the pandemic started, I was taking him to play with me in in, in this other run that I was playing in. And we're the uh -huh. same size, so we guard each other. And okay. it, it's great, dude. It's like this is what I've been waiting for my whole life. But my son is getting really good. Like he yeah. doesn't have a job, so You're like how can I get better? Yes, at this yes, it, yes. Can I still improve my yes. skills. Yes. And let me tell you something. The last thing you want is your son, your size, wearing your gear, cooking yeah. you on the court. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you don't you don't want a fifteen year old because like they're so cool about it. They're super nonchalant. Like yeah. he'll be humming Drake lyrics while he's cooking me on the court. Like <laughs> yeah. so that ain't cool. That ain't yeah. nothing you want. Come on. Yeah, yeah, come on, dude. You're doing too much. <laughs> my son, my son is 12 and he's a big uh -huh. dude, but I still yeah. carry him to bed. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. I still carry him like, yeah, I got nice. I still got, I still got you. So yeah. don't forget. Yeah. Who yeah. Can still carry you to bed. Yeah. <laughs> so I uh good. my son told me he said uh he said, Dad, I'm gonna be better than you in two years. And now we're into that second year. Yeah. So clock is ticking dude it is ticking like we'll shoot around a little bit and i'm a good outside shooter okay but i can tell he's getting better like you know he got that young energy yeah you got so, you guys start getting busy with comedy or just kind of i know i know i know look for another car with a cup holder yes you gotta yes another. i gotta have another little outlet <laughs> oh, i gotta have another outlet yeah yeah come on dad can't be playing ball all yeah <laughs> he uh it was funny the uh he took me to go like his friends play a little bit together right and it's just you know the young kids with that young yeah. energy and he was like hey dad you want to come with me and play and i thought he was inviting me to go play but he was just inviting me to drive him there and watch. Yeah. yeah so yeah, okay. I was like, yeah, I was like, it was like he was Batman and I was Alfred, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Good shot, I, Mr. Wayne. Good shot. I got you here safely, Mr. Wayne. <laughs> yes. Would have been anything else you need, Mr. Right. Wayne. I'll be I'll be over at the car, Mr. Wayne, and have a have a, have a spiffy game. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if you need anything more. Right, right. Or the laces. <laughs> right. I recommend these Jordans, Mr. Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> you got a collection of Jordans. I know you got a shoe collection, too. Yeah, and he's um, 
He's, he, he's it's funny. He's, those? Well, he's a size nine. I'm a size nine and a half. Oof. So he is just frothing at the mouth. He's like, he's like, I'm about to get the golden ticket. Yeah. <laughs> uh, every now and again, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll bless him with a good little pair. Like Break I gave him, him a pair. Yes. Yes. So, but he's, he knows, he knows I got the stash and he's, he's ready to be all in it. So it's the time. It's that time, dude. I'm, I, I'm, I've gone from Batman to Alfred. Yeah. You have. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He's not even Robin anymore. I, yeah, I used to wear the cape. I used to have the Batmobile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they got me in the shokes. <laughs> <laughs> you had the cup holders, man? Exactly. Oh. <laughs> now you're holding OG. his cup. Now OG holding his cup holder. <laughs> <laughs> I showed my kids today. Actually, I really I showed them a crazy legs of you. Do you have oh, a dream? You did? Yeah, I oh, got you a dream. Did? I got oh, a dream. That's awesome. That is you know, awesome. You know, back in the last fact, that I friend from England visiting. And they're like, you know, crazy uh -huh. legs. You remember it's, that, dude? It is. It's. It's insane how much love crazy legs gets. Like it is. Like I'm surprised I don't. There's have... like t-shirts and stuff, right? Oh, is there t-shirts? Wait a minute. Is Everybody... there? Is there t-shirts? Is there t-shirts? Check this out, y'all. What? So, if you that is seen, a. That is a. Menace to, to South society. Central. While South drinking Central. your juice in the hood. That's right. And I so played Crazy was, Legs. And went on to be an the, iconic. Yes, the character. best dancer in the hood who was in a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah, I got a dream. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> crazy Legs, y'all. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. You, you know what I still I get, dude? Of the, did you see the video posted of the, the, I forgot where he is. He's somewhere in Northern California. He's a, He's like a lineman coach, but he was yes. like a hammer backup dancer. Yes, yes, yes. And he yes. was really great. Yes. He's like a 320. Yes. He's like, no, 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 no. And he can break it down. Yes. Yes. I thought dude, of when I saw that. So I got to post this. Yeah. Dude, it's it's uh it's crazy. Crazy Legs gets a lot of love. Like a lot of love. My my daughter went to school in Atlanta, went to Spelman. Uh -huh. So uh, you know, I would go down there and do these dad visits, right? And I would be in total dad mode. Like I wouldn't yeah. be thinking about nothing. I'm just like, oh, cool. I get to spend the weekend with my daughter. But I forget I'm going down to the ATL and I'm crazy legs. So I'll be walking around and people will be like, oh, damn, dog. There go crazy legs right there. <laughs> <laughs> there, go, there go crazy legs. ATL got love for crazy legs. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> ATL's got big love for crazy legs. I love the ATL. I used to DJ at a club 131 downtown back in the day. Okay. I was, the, I was the only white dude for a 10 mile radius. Yes. Mile. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. You know, ATL. Yeah. I got love for the ATL, man, because they didn't yeah, kill ATL. me. ATL. Yeah, that's a good place. They let a crazy white boy with a mullet come in and put down some key sweat, and they didn't yeah. kill me. So. Yeah, because you put down that key sweat. <laughs> they were like, he knows what's up. <laughs> I wanna, I wanna. Yeah. All right. what's yeah. Up? <laughs> All I right. did a little key sweat move, he's, like, he's like I was kind of doing the Smurf. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> too hey. much, just hey. just enough, you know, just enough. Yeah. <laughs> All right, he's cool. Hey man, I like those old school, um, the the Seven Up posters behind you. Yeah, man, that's uh, that's that old school. I got that little, you know, I like my my uh, my little dining room area has got that fifties diner vibe to it. And I said I'm gonna take it all the way back. That um, that Seven Up signs from 1957. Oh wow, man! I yeah. did that. I yeah, like it. I like it's got it. that. It's got that vibe. I like. Are you sure? Are you still in Sherman Oaks? I am in the Shokes. I am All in right, the Shokes. Shokes. All yeah. right, I see you every once in a while. All right, yeah. I'm gonna pick you up in the TA one day, man. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah, let's do. I'm down, dude. I'm down. All right, I'm let's with do it. that, buddy. I'm with it. All right, Sully McCullough, one of my favorite people in the comedy biz, y'all. Check him out. What do you got coming up, man? Let him know. Uh, dude, I, uh, I was touring before this, me and Sean Wayans were touring the country, ripping it up. And then this pandemic stopped all that. Uh, I am, uh, currently producing Anthony Anderson's show, uh, to tell the truth. I'm a consulting producer on that. Uh, I've been writing a bunch, dude, writing a, a, a series right now, which is good. Uh, setting up some shows. So, uh, crazy legs is going to be there. I'm crazy legs. The mix. <laughs> <laughs> this pandemic ain't stopping nobody. <laughs> can't stop that. Oh, no, no, no. No, you can't stop it. <laughs> no, no, no. 
All right, it's one of the funniest man in the comedy business, Mr. Suley McCullough. You told me you'd have a beer tonight. Hey, I got a beer. There you go. There you go little, little Chimay right there. All Good right, my man. You, man. Thank you so much for stopping by. Absolutely. The right, Absolutely. Good to see you, man. Suley McCullough, everybody. All right, everybody, that was Johnny Sanchez. Um, one of my buddies, uh, you saw him on Mad TV and Comedy Central Special. Check him out. And this next guy, we go way back also. He's a stud. He's like a superhero. He's uh, <laughs> I, think he, I, I think he's still one of the most eligible bachelors. I don't know. He may, he may correct me on that. But you, uh, you've seen him on a lot of shows. And, of course, you've seen him for, I think, 12 or 13 seasons on American Ninja Warrior. Give it up for Matt Eisman, everybody. Stevie D, my guy. I love you, brother. Look at that. Oh, that is now that is an old school photo of me right uh, there. I got, a, I got an older school photo. Ah, that's Dr. Drake Ramore right there, buddy. Look at that, <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, that is good. How you doing? Wait, were you just on with Sanchez? Or was that yes, he said to tell you how he was trying to eat into your time. I go, look, Johnny. Oh I go, man, I, I love my doing. guy. The red light has been on for four and a half minutes, Johnny. Sanchez blowing the light. <laughs> You're blowing the light, bro. Disrespectful. <laughs> Disrespectful. And you have DP night. on tonight, too, Dwayne Perkins? DP's on. All of our homies, the drinking I mean, word tonight is old school. I don't know if you heard the drinking word. Did you hear me? I said old school photo of me right there. Right there. Old school. Oh, old oh, school. Did it there, Matt Eisman. <laughs> bro, how you You're doing, best, Stevie? Bro. I'm good, buddy. I, I didn't mention your name, but I kind of mumbled it like we've had technical glitches. So now we're pre-record on Monday. I said in the past, a couple of times when we went on IG Live, you know, people couldn't jump on yeah. Matt Eisman and had technical. They weren't able to, <laughs> Matt Eisman, you know, jump. I don't, for whatever reason, flip phone, flip phone. Um, <laughs> I was going to show you something up here, but I can't find it. Hold on. Oh, dude, I see that old school boom box. Back there. Oh, that's nice. Look, I'm wearing it. Oh, shit. You know I got that shirt, too. You, you know, know I, I put this on in honor of you, buddy. And look what I'm wearing. Did you see this? Evil oh, Knievel those are sneakers. Nice. I got to say, Evil Knievel, he nailed it with all the, the imaging. Back before that was a thing, just that suit he had, the logos, it was all top notch. And it just it, it, it embodied. Oh, Oh my God! I just got sent one. I mean, they're you know they're making new yeah. versions of those old ones. I got the new old one because we when we, when I did Evil Live, I think they, they quoted me like an original one of those stunt cycles. Those yeah. are like a thousand dollars unopened oh, now. Geez. Yeah, but I, I mean, I remember that was one of those toys. Like you remember the commercials? Whenever you'd see uh, them, they're like, "Oh, the slinky," and it would jump downstairs. Yeah, it yeah, never yeah. worked. <laughs> that thing though, that that stunt cycle, the Evil Knievel stunt cycle was better than advertised. That thing was awesome. It would just you stay could up land right. it. You could oh. land it. You were going. It was that was so ahead of its time. One one of, one of the classic toys of all time. Yeah, Slinky never went down the steps, but the Evil Knievel stunt cycle could do a flip and still land. Like the action figure wasn't as accurate as they make them today. Yeah. Like last week, I had a. WWE former champion uh, Candice Michelle. She's had action figures and they do 3D imaging. Yeah. They're like, oh shit, just get a bendable uh, Stretch Armstrong <laughs> and put a put a helmet on Stretch Armstrong and put him on a motorcycle. That was it. It worked. <laughs> it worked, though, man. I, I I don't know. They I don't know. They, the kids the kids I don't know that they have physical toys like those. And everything feels virtual and and you know the the, the computers everything. But to, to have those old toys and to build, I remember we would spend. You know, we'd take all the Hot Wheels cars. We'd have Evil jumping Hot Wheels and Matchbox oh. cars and building the ramp and... Line them up. He's oh, done my 14, God. He's done 14 Hot Wheels. 14 he's Hot Wheels. 15. I loved it. That was the best, man. Ah, uh, those but, were the days. But I'm so jealous because you have the leather custom-made jumpsuit. Full leather. And here's the problem, though. Like, I, I, I had it put on me. With, like, it, it was made uh, in somewhere in Europe. I don't even know where. On my measurements, but I apparently I was not accurate because this thing is skin tight leather. I, I put it on, <laughs> and the only time the, the the times I've worn it have been when we did Evil Live and Evil Live 2.0. And you know, it, first one was in Vegas 
where you're walking around, it's 100 degrees at night, and the yeah. second time was out at San Bernardino at the airport, where it was like 110, and I'm just, I'm soaking through it, staying in the car. I feel like a superhero. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a daredevil. Did you put the baby powder inside? I did not. That would have been a good tip. I wish I you would have told me that before, Stevie. I heard like Robert Plant or something said, when you wear the leather pants, always put the, the baby powder first. Oh, and yeah. Slide them on. I, I will tell you that I, 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 I would love to have a, a pleather one or one that's stretchable and breathable. Yeah. <laughs> but the leather is awesome. These, yeah, these, these are great. It, it's inspired me to try to lose weight to fit better in my evil suit. No, you're always in shape. But when I first met my wife 20 years ago, I met her at the comedy store. And I used to do a Friday night show up in the belly room at Sergio Love. The Pimp Daddy Show. Sergio so we, Love. Sergio Love. No one knows where Sergio is now. He's in witness protection or something. Oh, man. In my convertible. People my convert stop and stare. In my convertible. <laughs> my convertible. Oh, my. We're, people don't know. We're de- like, it, it, it is, you, you just, you know the bits of your fellow comedians. Yeah. Especially those ones, like, when you were grinding out day in and day out. Those comics, like, you, you could recite their acts better than they can. Yeah, yeah, my convertible. So I'm sorry, I interrupted. You're doing the show. You're the gangsters. Oh no, the, the so I showed up and had a leather, the, the, leather pants. Oh. The first night I met my wife, I had a cut off purple rain T-shirt on, and uh, leather pants. And so, was it our day that pants. day? Did you have the pump going? Oh yeah, of course I wear that. I should have given Johnny Sanchez shit because the first night I met him in the belly room, 24 whatever years ago. I think I was wearing a vest and work boots. I'm like, what's up, bro? And then he goes after me, and he's like, does eight minutes on ripping my ass. Like, hey, bro, shouldn't you be doing some uh, crunches or something? What are, you, what are you telling <laughs> jokes for, man? Are you in the village, people? Why are you wearing a vest oh, my to, a, God. to a comedy show, man? And I've loved him ever since. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I met Katie, my wife, wearing leather pants, and uh, not, not proud of that. But a few years ago, I had a, a birthday party for her, and I got the leather pants out for the first time in like 15 years. And I put them on that, and I was I was walking on like this. They 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 were standing up in the corner by themselves because. <laughs> you know what? You should be proud of that because Thank you, you are you're you're a Trans Am leather pants kind of guy, Stevie. And the That's woman who's going to marry you is, is going to be the woman who who embraces that. And she did. She's like, well, he's a work in progress. And twenty years later, she said, "We're making a little progress." Uh, She's like, you know what? No one else is going to want him. That, that, yeah. that, that's always my goal with women. She's the queen of my double wide now. Oh, that's but awesome. Buddy, you're one of the few, I don't know, you and uh, Ken Jong are one of the only two comics for people that don't know that you were a doctor or yeah. you were in medical school first? Did medical school, got my MD, and was doing residency when I decided to <laughs> take a break, move out to Hollywood, start doing stand-up, and never looked back. And I am... I'm so happy. I mean, especially right now when doctors are literally on the front lines, life or death in this pandemic, and Woo. I'm out here doing awesome podcasts with you from the safety of my own my own home. Yeah, it's you know, it, it was a crazy switch. Like I, I growing up, I never, I never thought, I never thought entertainment was an option. I grew up in Colorado, and yeah. you know, like I, I just, I didn't know anyone who did entertainment. It just felt like a foreign world. Yeah. yeah. And, and I always, you know, I did school and sports and, and got into medicine and just kind of realized my heart wasn't in it. And, and I think we're seeing right now, it's not a job. It's a calling. Like it's, it's a sacred trust when people place their lives in your hands. And, yeah. and, and when I, when I, when I was having doubts, I just thought I, I, I got to resolve this. And I yeah. thought, I thought I'll come out to LA. I'll do stand up and I'll grow up. I'll get it out of my system and I'll yeah, go back yeah. and I'll be an adult. I'll be a doctor and I'll say it instead. I was like, oh, this is where I'm meant to be. This, Were you this like a is funny it. doctor? Did you go, you got yeah. cancer, right? Oh, I think I was know. hilarious. Yeah, right? Honk, honk. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, yeah, I, I, I don't – I think I've always thought I was funny. My, my friends from college and med school have said I'm like the 17th funniest one of our friends, so – I, I think uh, out of eighteen. Yeah, out of eighteen, they're like, "Oh yeah, you no, you, you, you really should have a career in comedy." It, it's uh, I don't know, I don't know where this came. And my, I was talking to my mom, and my mom goes, "I don't know," because she and my dad they grew up in small town Nebraska. They met in junior high. My dad's a doc, and they, they're they're the sweetest people, but sh- they they don't like the spotlight. And I'm like, "More for me." She's like, I don't yeah. know where this came from. But I, I honestly, I, I say like people go into comedy for one of two reasons. Either they weren't hugged enough as a child or they were hugged too much. And I was yeah. definitely in that latter group where my mom, 
just, you know, anything I did was amazing. And so like yeah. anytime I perform, I feel like the, it's my mom's hugs, you know, that, yeah. that's, that's oh, why that's I love good. it. I, I love that feeling, the attention and, and, and just being in front of a crowd. I think I'm the first one I needed. I was driving with my kids yesterday and I said some, you know, their mommy, my wife wasn't with us. So I said some inappropriate poop joke, of course, and they laughed. I'm like, don't encourage them. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I heard that a lot from my teachers. I was yeah. like, don't encourage them. Yeah. And now I'm telling my own kids, don't encourage me. Yeah. We got more hey, guys, I got more. You want more? Yeah, no, know. Dad. No, they're well, giving you the light. Yeah, yeah. They're like, isn't Sanchez up? What's going on? Why you <laughs> Sanchez is just, he's going to get in your car and do, do a quick 10 minutes with your kids. <laughs> he's in I, the wings. It is, it's, you know, it's been crazy during this time I've, I've done stand up really, I guess once at the factory when, when they were doing those streaming shows. Oh yeah. You did it. No audience. How'd that go? Yeah. No audience. And, and you know, Craig Robinson was there, which was the saving grace. Oh, but he came into the keyboards and yeah. And it was so surreal. Cause I think it's one thing if, you know, to, to do it at home, to do it, like, if I did stand up like this for people, that'd be one thing, but to go into the church, to go into the factory where, where you, you do it, where you do it with like, crowds yeah. and to be on that stage and to have the microphone and to be in the room that's empty telling your jokes. It was really, it, it was really, it was, it, it was hard. And I think it's, you know, comedy is, is a dance. Like, you know, you can't, you can't do it without an audience. That, yeah. That's the whole point. And, and yeah, so, yeah. I, I mean, I was, I was so glad that they did it because it was fun to get, to, to get up. And, and I, I know the, the factory was doing it to support the comics. Yeah. Um, so I, cool. I, I love that they were doing it, but it's, it's tough. I, I, I mean, it's a scary time for stand up because I think people need to laugh, but it's just, you know, the, the clubs are, are just, uh, it's, it's tough. I saw Burt Kreischer's doing a, a drive in theater tour. <laughs> I saw, I had Mike Marino on a couple weeks ago. And he goes, Oh, this week I said, you get, got any gigs? I was kind of being sarcastic. Got any yeah. gigs coming up? What, what do you want? And he's like, yeah, I'm doing a drive in, uh, theater, like a drive in movie theater this weekend. Um, I uh, just got some uh, mention from my producer. I didn't see it. But anyway, oh. but he said, no, and people, and I thought he was joking. And I saw, I think, Graham Elwood, a couple other comics did one this past weekend where they're like, no, people are in the drive-in, they're in the cars, and if they think you're funny, they honk. I'm like, are they lit, like, five? <laughs> when I was in a drive-in movie theater as a teenager in my car, I didn't even know what movie was playing. Yeah, it was a Bob so, Seger right. song. Yeah. Working on the night moves. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I again, it's like front seat. <laughs> for the crowd, for the people in the cars, it's one thing. They could be laughing, but you're not getting it. When you're on stage, yeah. you're just seeing the cars and hearing horns. I, 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 I mean, I, so, again, I'm, I'm so glad that comedians are figuring out ways and, and doing it, but it's, it's, uh, it's tough, and it's tough. Like, the New York, they were doing them outdoors. They were doing them in parks, and then they, those all got shut down. So uh, did uh, San Diego. Oh. Um, so did the, uh, the comedy store down there the other day. I saw a couple of others. They were, and they, but they were having them in the parking lot. Yeah. And they're like, I'm like, how are you hurting anyone in the parking lot? You know, if they have chairs and tables, you know, socially distant. Yeah. But, uh, no, tonight is the first night I'm doing a Facebook live, but that's just so I need the pressure of knowing somebody live is watching. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and it is you know again it's I think it's different. like you adapt right if you're if you're doing it to the phone if you're doing it here it's different as opposed to being on stage with the mic yeah um, but it's I, I don't know I I, I I I think it's great that comedians are finding ways to perform and you know podcasting and, and ways to connect with the audience because I, I mean pe look people are consuming content but right now they they, they need humor man I, I think we yeah. all can use. Uh, something just to take our minds off of everything that's going on and, and just the constant drumbeat of, of fear that we're all faced with. And this cancel culture, like you can't do a joke or they're going to go uh, back in your tweets six years ago. I'm yeah. like, I'm sure I've offended everybody on the planet. <laughs> I'm an equal opportunity offender. Let you me know save what? you the trouble. Yeah. yeah. Cancel me. Yeah. Oh, no, it, 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 and it, you know, I, I, I think I, it's a shame because I also feel like that's the importance of comedy is sometimes tackling difficult subjects and, and talking about things that otherwise might be taboo and, and, and for comedy to be such an important way to sometimes broach a topic using humor and, and to present ideas that otherwise might not be talked about or, 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 you know, where you can kind of infiltrate someone's defenses uh, using comedy. And I, I, yeah. I mean, I look at like, how, how many people I think have uh, comedy has, has really been a great tool uh, f for breaking down walls. So I, 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 
I, I'm hopeful that, you know, that the pendulum swings back and we, we kind of embrace that with comedy and, and, uh, and just remember it's, you know, they're, they're words and, and, you know, the way to counter them is with more words. It's, it's called a joke, you know. And, it's a uh, joke! I talk about my sister being the man of the house and they're like, I think you're being insensitive. Do you think it? And I'm like, who do you think I ran it by first? If she didn't think it was funny, yeah. maybe she would still kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't she give a shit said I could do the joke. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Sanchez just said, American Ninja Eisman right over here. So, oh, Sanchez. Oh, real quick. This guy is so great. Let me tell a story about Matt Eisman real quick because he's the most humble guy. He's, I think he's even won an Emmy. Did you win an Emmy? Yeah, yeah. I have an Emmy. I, I, I'm so humble that the trophy sits in my bedroom, Stevie. <laughs> oh, this, right next to oh, this right thing there? that I polish every night. I'm just polishing my trophy. Yeah. My, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a couple of years ago, uh, my son had a, had a birthday party at Dojo Boom, and, uh, which is out, out here. We're, we're at Gore Hills, Thousand Oaks, something. And uh, Kevin the Bull. Kevin Bull. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin the Bull. Kevin Bull. Yeah, from American Ninja Warrior, opened this killer in indoor facility. Like, we had monkey bars at the playground. These kids today go in. They have foam. But they can't get hurt. It's yeah. impossible. You, get, you do nine flips and you're going to land. I oh. can get hurt in there. They can't. Yeah, yeah. We can still, like, pull some, you and I. Oh, like, yeah. But it was amazing. So I had his birthday party there, and we're about to cut the cake. And Mr. Matt Eisman here, Mr. American Ninja Warrior, uh, did a video for my son, and I saved it. We're about to cut the cake. And I said, everybody, hold on. Somebody like to wish uh, Colin a very special happy birthday. I put up the iPad, and he goes, hey, Colin. This is uh, uh, Matt Eisman from American Ninja Warrior. And he did a whole thing about my son, blah, blah, blah. And after that, it was like, Matt Eisman's the best ever. I wish uh, he was my dad. Uh, <laughs> you know, pay for it, Matt Eisman didn't pay for this party. Uh, Matt Eisman didn't pay for anything. <laughs> it's so funny to me, Steve. I get such a kick out of doing those videos. And, and uh, to, to me, because I, I grew up in front of the TV. I just remember watching. And I always thought, man, what would it have been like because I loved the Six Million Dollar Man. And if, if like, Lee Majors had done a message like, hey, Matt Eisman, it's Lee Majors. <laughs> you can be Bionic too. I would have lost my mind. And, and, you know, kids I don't think are quite as impressed as I would have been. But, but to be able to do these videos and, and, and reach out to the kids who, who are fans of the show is so awesome. And it's been, like, okay, we're, we just finished season 12. It's going to be coming out September 7th. And we, we, we managed to shoot it during this lockdown. It was, it was amazing. We went to St. Louis. We, we did it in the Dome. Wow. And we just, we moved heaven and earth to do it in a safe way and to, to pull this season off. And I'm so excited it's coming out. And it was just awesome seeing these ninjas out there and how many of them were just like, oh, it's so nice to be doing this, to be doing something normal yeah. and, and fun and, and just to kind of grab back that sense of normalcy in the midst of all this to, to have those things. So that's going to be coming out, uh, you know, beginning of September. Uh, okay. And I'm, I can't wait for people to see it, man. It was, was there an audience great. for that? We didn't have an audience. So we're in a dome where the Rams okay. used to play, 80,000 seats. And wow. so we shot it. You know, we, we, we made the, the course the centerpiece. And what we did was we could only have three ninjas in the building at a time. So one was on the course, two others would cheer. But then we did jumbotrons lining the course, and we'd have family and friends watching. Oh, that's so and cool. And be able to cheer. And they could, they could talk back and forth and – you know, it's it's not the same as having tens of thousands of people there, but you know, I think everyone gets it. This is yeah. this is the kind of the reality we're dealing with, and I I thought we did a great job, and and I, you know, it, it's it was amazing how once we got going, it felt you know it's felt the same. The people are tackling these obstacles; they put their time in, and and at a certain point, you you know, at least when I was there, I, I just kind of just focused on hey, these people. It, it felt the same. It, it felt the same to me. Really. Did you have we, we piped in a little crowd noise. Oh, yeah. Did you have a big budget like this? You know? Oh, yeah. We, we would pipe in a little crowd noise, and and, uh, and Akbar and I are both, like, enthusiastic. We get really excited. So it was, it was fun, and it was just nice that we were able to pull it off because, you know, work, work so many productions have just shut down. So it's nice to be, yeah. uh, nice to be Still going. Still working, brother. Have you ever tried the course yourself? Broken foot, broken ankle the last two times. I, I, not only have they told me never to do it again, I, I told them. I'm like, if you guys see me look at an obstacle, tackle <laughs> me. Don't let me go near it again. I, uh, I, I, but my days of ninja, I would like to say, are, you know, are in my past. I don't know that I ever would have been well-suited to Ninja Warrior. But, no, uh, I, had, uh, I had Trish Sir on the show, 
And you and Trish used to Trish! Uh, we had yeah, a clean you, house together. She was a go to diva. I was a go to right. guy. <laughs> the bigger the hair, the closer to the low. Oh, right? closer right. to the, the Kentucky girl, Stevie. Yeah, that's right. She called you a superhero, like a real life superhero. Uh, but anyway, how weird is this? The day this was my memory five years ago. Oh, I know. It's these studs right there, people. Oh, look at that. Anyway, Matt Eisman, you love you, brother. I appreciate you taking time. Hey, to do Stevie, this. so so great to see you, buddy. Thank you. You Thanks too, my man. Have me on, buddy. Be well. When does the first episode air again? Uh, so September seventh for American Ninja Warrior and Live Rescue, the show where we follow first responders live. That's coming back. We're going to be live starting this Friday on A and E. So yeah, awesome. we'll be following paramedics, firefighters, and uh, uh, first responders. So check it out. You're, on you're the man, buddy. Thanks for stopping by. All right, Steve. Bring your BMX over. Let's do some sweet jumps in the whoop, street whoop. and uh, evil for life. Old school, bro. <laughs> old, old, old school. school. <laughs> Have a good one, bud. Good callback. See you, man. Thank you, buddy. All right, the headliner finally has showed up here. No, no, they all been headliners tonight. It was a trifecta. Three rock stars tonight. The Ken G, Candace Michelle, and this girl has been a friend of mine. We've even, uh, I've even dragged her to the, the Ha Ha Couple of Comedy Club. <laughs> She's a podcaster. She was on Man Seeks Adventure. You know her from TV shows like Garage Squad, Fitness Model, Actress. Hold on, getting out of breath. Just, just doing the Woo! intro, I'm out of breath already. You're almost everybody, there. Everybody, <laughs> everybody, everybody, let me get a real pretty picture of her. You know her, you love her. She's adventurous, Miss Heather Storm. Oh. I, got, I got sound effects. Heather's wow. very professional now. This is so cool. I'm like, you know? I, I feel like a rock star. You, you, you deliver, you deliver. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, I hooked up my, my, my brains behind the operation of all the years, about 20 plus years, Judy Sketch Lewinson. And uh, like you said, she was sending you talking points today. I know. I, I, I was like, wait, I have to think about this before I go on? No, 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 no. I just like flying off the cuff. <laughs> I thought Stevie just turns on some IG camera and we'd be asked for a little while and I got used to it, knowing, like, don't ask him questions, just go with it, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't do much prep. I just kind of turn on the camera and see where it goes. I used to be a preparer. I'm letting go. I'm learning to let go. You got, yeah, and this, and, and, and doing comedy, like, I sit down two hours before my sets, and I go over, like, the roadmap, not exactly word for word, but I know where I'm going, and now I'm just like, I should probably put together a monologue or something. I don't know. <laughs> You're like, what am I going to talk about today? I don't know. What, what is there a holiday coming up or something? <laughs> six, I don't know what day it is. It's six o'clock. Because <laughs> it's Sunday. Wait, I need to revise the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, Judy's like, I was thinking about talking points. If you want to do some uh, a monologue up front, I'm like, well, oh, I just, I just BS. Isn't that a monologue? It's just, a, just the talk. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's all perspective. It's all a matter of perspective. You know, this is cool. This is cool. So this is the new show. So you're going to be on YouTube every week, huh? Yeah. So we moved it to uh, YouTube. Come on, get happy hour. It was just live from the double wide. You know, we're still in the double wide here. Uh, you know, and we That's still the have the drink. And, and I got the still drink, have, so we're happy. Drink get, you know me, Heather. You know <laughs> we're having, did you hear the drinking word tonight? What's that? Did you hear the drinking word? No. It's goal. Like what? I want to talk about your goals in life. Ooh, big stuff today. Big we stuff. Dude, you really stepped in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like thought long and hard on this. It was like I'll look around for a drinking word. Remote control. Okay, every time I say remote control, but no goals. But you, you've done so much in your career. You know, I don't want to get too deep. I like to keep it light. But you've really like accomplished a lot. I, I mean, I try. <laughs> I don't know if I've accomplished many of the things, the, the goals that I have out there. Wait, do we drink when we say that? Yes, you just said it. <laughs> and the first oh. two guests were so healthy, they wouldn't drink, so I still have half a drink here. So thank you, Heather. You're welcome. I mean, this, I, this is the game. You said we're playing, so. This is going to be empty by the end of our interview. This better be empty. Absolutely. I'm with you. No, I mean, gosh, I mean, you know, goals are always evolving. And I think that, you know, <laughs> this has been a big time for me to just be reevaluating things, reevaluating my goals for myself, what I want, um, where I want to be, you know, not just five years. But, you know, when you think about like, okay, well, I still have 10, 15, 20, 25 years, 30 years of work left. What do I want to be doing? You know, you, like you went to Costa Rica. Was that hard? Like to shut off Hollywood? Just to, oh, you said go. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. 
You know, I tell everybody, you know, when they say, oh, I'm going to go on vacation for a week, I'm like, that's not enough. No, no, no. You need to like, if you want to get out of the country and really see a place go, you need to go for a month because week by week, you just start to kind of melt down and like, yeah. down. especially as you know, living in Los Angeles, it's a very high energy city. There's just a lot going on. Your mind is, you have everybody has three jobs. You're trying to make things happen. You're yeah. hustling. It's just, you're on, you're yeah. on all the time. And um, to be able to turn it off is, is great, but it takes time to turn it all the progress, way off. Progress. You know, it takes, it takes a lifetime, I think, to turn it all the way off. But I think after a month, you start to realize, like, this is how it really could be. I yeah. could just be really like this. So I have goals now that include Costa Rica of, uh, you know, spending a lot of time there a year, you know, coming back, continuing to do shows and things, but spending a lot of time in Costa Rica. I mean, that's, that's a happy place for me, for sure. That was cool. I knew you said goals. We're going to get a refill over there, Heather. I told you. I told you. I was with you. <laughs> We're two minutes into the interview and you're empty already. I love it. I, don't worry. I brought the wine. All right. right. Just, I, the I didn't know we were playing a drinking game, but I did know I may want a little more wine. <laughs> well, you know me. You know, we like to have fun. But, you know, I was on the boat yesterday. I don't know if you heard that I was in Big Bear. And you're right. I was there for like, we we're there four days total, but you give a day of travel, settle in day to drive back to pack shit up and it takes me at least 24 hours just to like I think my heart rate even comes down but I was thinking back like in the 90s and I would be out here and I didn't have a family and I would be hustling and waiting for my agent for an audition and I would literally if I went to Atlanta for a weekend or something I'd be like fuck I'm gonna miss I'm gonna miss an audition I mean, and your a couple pager, times your I did pager might beep, beep. Yeah, and, and a, yeah my pager is blowing up you know like where are you where are you? <laughs> and my, my agent had like a 311 or something. Oh, I'm in trouble. She's like, yeah. we need to give our audition tomorrow at 2 o'clock. And like, what do you mean you went out of town? You're supposed to call. And like, you're always like at the mer you're at the whim. Always. And like, always. And they, they feel like they own, you know, this is a true story. I'm on our honeymoon, uh, a, like a week, like maybe three days before my honeymoon, I got booked for something to go to Las Vegas for the channel. And I'm like, oh, I'm going, going on my honeymoon. My, my manager was actually like, this is the E. You can't, you can't, go, like, you can't postpone your honeymoon? <laughs> no, no. no, I mean, it, you're, not, you're not allowed to have a life. Your number like, one goal what? is yeah, to be no. an actor. You will do nothing else. Everything yeah. is secondary to that. Yeah. It's the number one rule of Hollywood. Like, you will do nothing. You will eat dirt. You will do nothing yeah. to be an actor. <laughs> She's I like, no, but you, you, oh. booked the, you booked the gig. And it was like some shitty E Channel five hundred dollar thing. Like I'm gonna cancel oh my, my God. fifteen thousand dollar honeymoon. I'm like, yeah, let me cancel my honeymoon. And so this is a true story. I came back from my honeymoon and I, I had a box at my door. I'm like, what is this? It was all my like I don't know if it's VHS or DVD, or whatever. It was with a letter from my manager saying, I'm sorry, I don't feel like I can help you anymore. And good luck in your career. I'm oh like, my goodness, you bitch. My Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what you realize, like, you know, there's, there's a code that a lot of people don't realize, you know, they see careers that are, and I, and, and I, and entertainment career is a general thing, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's you're in comedy, acting, usually you're <laughs> dipping into a lot of those things because you're doing whatever you can to get your name out there, yeah. um, you know, be your own person, get your identity and, and own that and figure out what that is. But even though there's a freedom that people think, you know, from the outside looking in, if you have the nine to five job, you're like, oh, God, you just get to do whatever you want. It might seem like that, yeah. but you don't really just get to do whatever you want because, yeah. like, if you get the job, it doesn't matter. Your dad can be dying in the hospital. They're like, are, are you coming in? Like, the movie yeah. needs you. I mean, and, yeah. I mean yeah. no one cares about your personal life, any of your struggles. Zero, zero compassion, <laughs> I would say. Zero. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> and, you better no. be available. And the number one rule, we know this, the Murphy Law of acting is as soon as you plan a vacation or a honeymoon, you get booked on a job. Every single time. Every time. It can be a dry spell. And then all of a sudden, like, what? The phone didn't ring for three months. And now, really? I got a call back? Oh, it comes in waves, too. Now I get a callback. All of a sudden, you'll get a bunch of callbacks. And you're just like, what? No one even cared about me. And now, all of a sudden, like, everyone wants to book me. But... <laughs> it's it's a crazy it's a crazy choice, but I I'm I'm glad to ride the roller coaster. <laughs> you're awesome. You've been on so many car shows, and you got a million car fans out there. And your your baby, your '65 Mustang. The last time we talked, you were going on this road trip. That's right. You were, you were going to blog it. 
Now, you took a girlfriend with you, took a friend. Did she go the full trip with you? Yeah, so we had a fantastic time. I know a lot of people saw it on my stories. Um, there's some posts on Instagram. Um, there will be a blog going up on my website very shortly. So Southwest Road Trip, kind of detailing everything. Um, but we drove from Los Angeles to Port Aransas, Texas, which is called Mustang Island. So we took my Mustang to Mustang Island, which was fun. Um, and we drove, it was hot. TV, it was it was hot. I mean, this we're talking about. We That's just, right, you're rocking those Daisy Dukes and all those stories. Oh, I there. was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and <laughs> I'm wearing them right now. Hold on. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, well, I mean, some people might want to see that. Go ahead. <laughs> that's, that's at the end of the show. That's a goal for some people. That's saying. a goal to rock, for a man to rock a Daisy Dukes. It never, was interesting driving hard. across during the pandemic because, um, well, number one, a lot of people were concerned. And honestly, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I mean, I didn't know what to expect coming back from Costa Rica to America during the pandemic. And then I wasn't really sure what was going to happen driving across. Like, are people freaked out? Are they okay? Like what's going on? What's the climate here? Um, and like, we wore, we wore our masks at the gas station everywhere we needed to go and stuff. And it was like, the more that we went towards Texas, the less people had masks on mm -hmm. in general, just as, as we, as we drove across, you know, and, yeah. um, I would say there were less people too. So yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. General, we were running into a lot of people <laughs> yeah. in general, but all the parks were closed and everything. No restaurants were open really. Um, yeah. Hardly like people were doing drive through, but I don't do, I don't do that kind of food. So I just packed a cooler full of healthy food and stuff. And so we just kind of mostly ate, you know, what we could buy at grocery stores and stuff like that. Um, but we stayed with a couple friends that and family are, are on the way. So you know, we kind of did it right. We didn't have to stay in a hotel and just eat like, <laughs> I <Yes>. don't know. <laughs> um, but we drove through a town called Truth and Consequences. Have you ever heard of this place? No, no, no. The name itself, as soon as I saw the sign, I was driving. I'm like, what is that? Truth and Consequences. Look it up. You got to look it up. <laughs> and we have to stop here. Yeah. So we looked it up and it's, it's this really popular place about with over 40 different geothermal hot springs. And it was like founded. Oh, yeah. A long, you know, back, oh, it sounded a long fucking time ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's just be honest. <laughs> and Native Americans were there from, like in the 80s. Yeah, many, many, many years. We're like many, swingers many. clubs having parties there or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but now there's like still 10, 10 spas or so, and um, all the natural thermal, geothermal water comes up, and so they just have like tubs. So we stayed at this little place that was built in the 1930s. And she said, if you stay in the courtyard, you have 24-7 access to the geothermal. Like, she had, like, five different rooms with these huge tubs. And when I say huge tub, I mean, like, just cement and, like, a big poured Japanese, like, cement tub. Not, like, a little American bathtub or whatever. Like, uh -huh. a huge tub. Like, uh -huh. you could put a lot of people in there. It was just her and I, but you could. <laughs> and, um... They're open 24 seven. So like we were the only people in there. Like we stayed in there for like four hours. We're like, this is amazing. We had our own <laughs> private room. We brought wine in there. We're in the tub hanging out. Like, I mean, it was so you worth couldn't it. Get it out? Was Can someone help us get out of the tub? Yeah. We brought water too. Cause that was important, but yeah, it does get you a little hydrate. Water. Yeah. Hydrate. You got to hydrate. You got one so wine, one water. So well. Yeah. And I slept so well. I know it was a wine too, but it was also the spa water. So yeah. apparently, like the ancient, you know, every all the science and the mythology, everything together says thirty-eight different minerals, and then all of these infused because it's our skin; it's semi-permeable, obviously. So yeah, they all fuse in, and you feel so good. I feel like you'd be into that. Let's do it. It's truth or consequences. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. You should take your family. It's they fast. don't stop you like at the border, and they go truth or consequence. You're like, what? What? I know you're like <laughs> consequences. Wait, consequences. Consequences. <laughs> Wait, what's your badge? Um, <laughs> no, well, that no, don't even work just, here. I just stop people at the border and see if they'll fall for it. It was a super cool place, though. Super artsy. I had never been to New Mexico before, so for me, it was just cool. Like a whole new truth consequences. New Mexico it was a whole new area. And um, it was just a fun excursion. So we kind of drove through the center of New Mexico. And then, you know, we went all through Texas, which was pretty boring. We just did that in a day. We're like, let's just get this out of the way and get there. You did Texas? You just bar barreled through Texas? Barreled through Texas in a it's, day. Texas goes but, for right, ever. It's, and there's nothing, I mean, there's plenty to do in Texas in some areas. But when you're just driving through the entire huge state, you don't, it's just flat. 
It's just flat. You see nothing. It's the in the middle of nowhere. It'll be like a sign saying, "Do not pick up uh, prisoners. State prison." And you're <laughs> yeah. like, "Oh, had I not seen that sign?" I totally I was, I was saw looking that for a prisoner to ex con. No, but it reminded me. I was like, if I see a guy in an orange jumpsuit, I'm definitely not picking him up. I mean, Duh, I would have fought. Just in case I would have. True consequence. <laughs> that was True consequence. <laughs> of your action right there. <laughs> the guy in the orange jumpsuit. Yeah, he looks a little shady. Well, the thing about having the Mustang too is he's a bad boy. You, you know this. You know this, Stevie. When you drive a classic car, people's everyone stops you. Everyone talks yeah. to you. If you don't like talking to people, you shouldn't drive a classic car. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. People are gonna look and ask questions and thumbs up. And I pictures. like talking to people, so it's fun. But you get all yeah. types of people when you drive across the country, so it's it's a real fun human study in, 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 in our American culture. You're just like, wow, like there's all types of people, and everyone. The fun thing about classic cars that I love is all different types of people like them. It's yeah, just, it um, yeah. You know, it brings in all different types of groups that are just like, wow, it's a cool, like people you wouldn't expect, you know, yeah. you walk up. like I expect, you know, the 65 year old guy who was like, I had one of those growing up, but you know, yeah, yeah. Get, you know, the unexpected woman, you know, that has to lean out of her car and yell at you, you know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. like she's really, <laughs> you know, which is great. So my people. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to drive across the country with my Trans Am, like on a, a flatbed truck, and, and pretend like I'm driving, like do a blog. But then, <laughs> if I get to a city like Truth or Consequence that I dig, let me off the truck, and I'd go around and drive around town. But, but you were brave to take your '65 Mustang, all oh, because when you were doing that, I was like, "Woo!" It and is like, brave. I, this whole time, I thought you were stuck in uh, Corpus Christi because you're like the 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 transit, the, like you're like the transmission, the numbers match. So I can't just go to like Amco and throw some transmission in. Oh. I was like, holy shit, it's been like three weeks. Still, is she okay? I'm like, they're just yes. messing with her. She, they're just a pretty girl, and they're just keeping her in Corpus Christi. They so just want me know, here. Like, no, so what happened was um, I got here. We got here safe. And then I was in Corpus, and I'm staying like 30, 30 miles from there. So I was in Corpus, and I was headed back, and – my car just started shuddering. Like I, I'm going 60 on the highway and my car just like, and I was like, Oh crap. And I like immediately the next exit, you know, I, I slow down, put my, my blinker on and it's, you know, 11 o'clock at night. So it's late. And I don't know, I'm not in the best area. I'm just coming into Corpus. Anyone who knows that area, it's kind of industrial. And I'm just like, crap, 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 crap. And I was just seeing a friend. So I was wearing like a long skirt and a cute little top. And I'm like, oh no, this is the worst right now. Like this is totally the worst scenario. You know, just, I just look so help more, much more helpless than I am. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm like, oh no. Um, so I pull over. Car, like, something's making a funny note. They I don't know, know you've, don't you've know been under the hood. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I know, I mean, really honestly, and women understand what I'm talking about. Like we live with just a fear that we have, you know, of those types of situations. Like yeah. that's, you know, that's one of the top fears. Like I don't want to break down late at night in a place I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> wearing a cute outfit that is suggestible in any way. Like this is, a, these are all bad things adding up. Yeah. <laughs> and so it happened, of course. And, um, I was sitting there like looking at my car, trying to like choose when I wanted to get out to like look under my car and lift the hood because anytime you do that, people want to come over and start to talk to you. And Cause this um, girl knows how to get under a hood of a car. Sometimes it's good when they come and talk to you, but sometimes you don't want some of those characters to talk to you. Yeah. So, you know, so a couple of people approach me. I'm like, I'm in good. I'm good. Just waiting for a friend. And meanwhile, like I'm talking, everyone's been here with the tow tow situation. Right. And if you're in a small area in Texas, like there's no one, the tow truck also with COVID people, yeah. businesses are not running as normal. Right. So it was like yeah, yeah. three hours to get a tow truck. We bring a tractor out and we'll, uh, <laughs> you that would have been faster. I'm pretty sure that would have been faster. <laughs> you don't care about this bumper. Do you? I'm just putting the, the winch right on your bumper there. Like, Hey ma'am, we got a tractor over there. You want to, Hook it up, I'd be like, Yeah, let's try that. This is a good idea. Get this going. Um, but I thought about you because going. I had I had it one time I had a um a, a Fiat Spider, like an 81 or something. I lived in Florida and I was like 21 years old, dumb and didn't have AAA or a credit card or anything. I'm like, well, I'm going to Gainesville this weekend. 
and had a sweet mullet, you know, long blonde hair. <laughs> and it would just fucking break down. And I'd be like in between like Panama City Beach and Gainesville and the, and the car would just break down. And some good old boys like every 20 minutes would pull over and go, hey, pretty girl, you need some, oh, God damn, that's a, that's a <laughs> They'd just speed off, hey, bro, come on. <laughs> Oh, see, that's when you needed your you had your Daisy Duke song. No, I had my well, I had the work boots on, and they're like, "Oh, hey, thing." <laughs> You're putting it to work, and <laughs> yeah, I was working those Daisy Dukes. <laughs> goals. <laughs> goals. Long story short, I watched the Ubers go from like three available Ubers to one available. Uber snagged that Uber guy and he was like you're lucky you got me nobody who drives an Uber around here and take you all the way to Port Aransas and I was like I know thank you so much <laughs> you, left your, you left your car on the side of the road no I left my car at a gas station I talked okay. to the guy who was there he said he'd watch it and okay. I, I called and like, <laughs> talked to them in the morning I was like I'm gonna be there don't tell my car please 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 and yeah, you know yeah. what the thing I like is the Texas hospitality. People are nice. They're generous. Yeah. And I, I do have to say, like, I'm so grateful, you know, for just the connections and the people being nice. Like, so he, he's like, no problem, ma'am. I'm like, all right, great. Thank you. Because in LA, I'd be really scared right now <laughs> about my car at this gas station, you know, but I actually felt like it was going to be okay where it was. Um, so yeah, it worked out. I was towed it to a shop and I got to say, like, there were a few other things that I found wrong with it, but I had to have the transmission totally rebuilt, which is why when you said earlier, you don't want to just swap it out for a new one. I'm like, no, it's yeah. number matching. The numbers like, match. I got to keep it like, like this. I mean, that's part of the integrity of having a classic car. When you get something, you know, with value that's holding that, I feel like yeah. you're, the keeper, you're the keeper of holding that in place intact. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, mine has the 350 transmission in the uh, 70 Trans Am. There's a Chevy transmission, but hey, I don't care. I mean, no, it, but I mean, you didn't, buy it. you didn't buy it like you bought it like that. I or bought it like that, and I yeah. even painted it a, a, a non factory color because I'm like, oh, I want yeah. like an electric blue. I want like a, <laughs> when I'm rocking my Daisy Dukes, I want this blue to like really. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do you, right? You got to you know, do that's you. me. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally. But I mean, for some people, if you, it depends what, it depends on the history of the car and when you got it. You know, it's, it, all yeah. people don't need to keep that. And if just maybe two were, maybe I'd reconsider it. But, you know, people commented and a lot of people reached out, you know, with advice and stuff. And they were like, oh, yeah. you know, I don't really have it done right now. And I was like, well, for me, I'm kind of person that likes to take a moment and make, consider all my options yeah. and then make the best decision that I'm going to look back and be like, you know what? I thought about everything that I could think of at the time. And I feel like I made a good decision. And I feel that way now that I got my retransmission rebuilt. We started putting it in today. Um, nice. So it's beautiful. I saw it. It's pretty. You could eat a sandwich. Yeah, off that yeah. It looked brand new. I know. Well, so the heat just killed it. And that's the thing too, like yeah. driving through the desert and everything. And I, and I realized this after talking to Leo. So I got to, I got to give a plug here because Leo Mendez from Apollo Automotive helped me up big time. So Leo, you're the man and just anyone in Corpus who needs somebody like, seriously, you know, this TV, when you talk with a lot of car people and you talk with a lot of shop owners too, and mechanic people. And when you have your own car and you care a lot about it and you want to know every single thing that's done, if you're not doing it yourself yeah. and you need advice on stuff after talking with a lot of people, you can really tell when people know, what they're talking about or not. And if For they sure. yeah, the yeah. best way or if they just get it done, there's a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, I like to do it the best way, not just get it done. Or at least I like to know my options so I can be like, well, I cut the corner because of this reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not well, just I'm glad. I thought you were stuck in Corpus Christi. So I was yeah. hustling and I found a friend there and he called no, I know. And I appreciate that. No, no, I, I'm not stuck anymore. I, I'm here for a little bit. I don't know how long. But um, I'm excited because I'm getting my car back and just, you know, the goal was to still do one more road trip before the year is over. It's not over I'm yet. Sorry. I'm sorry, the what was? The goal. Oh, ah! was I said it twice now. <laughs> I forgot. See, that was, that was me. Okay. <laughs> We're going to pause this interview while she uh, refills her glass. Uh... <laughs> Wait, are you still, you didn't refill yours? You're taking baby sips. You know why? Because my first two guests were like health freaks. And they're like, uh, I have kombucha over here, and I'm drinking uh, Bragg's apple cider vinegar. I'm like, What are you drinking? Uh, this is moonshine. No, I'm kidding. It's uh, a, yeah. as I, you know, our friend Brad Franshaw, 
when you guys, he makes, he goes too in depth with a drink. He takes four hours to make one drink. And I'm like, Brad. So I had him on a couple weeks ago and he was saying, oh, I took a, a nut, you know, I took a, a fig and I shaved just the rind of the fig. And then I went and got 27 different ingredients. I go, you know what I did, Brad? I went to Trader Joe's and I picked very carefully the vodka that was on sale. <laughs> and the vodka was on sale for $9.99. I then proceeded to bring my bottle home and I opened the refrigerator and I'm like, what goes really great with Sky Vodka? I had half of a vitamin water and it was a perfect drink. It's perfect the lemon drink. vitamin water, isn't it? It's so great. So, it's the uh, lemon vitamin water, right? The lemon flavor? Yes, yes. So to answer your question, vodka and a little vitamin water. I've totally done that. No shame in that at all. You're getting hydrated while you dehydrate. I realize, you know, the more, the more I drive my car, and I know we talked about this a little bit, but it's just like, I got a car to drive it. I wanted to drive a classic car across the country. That's what I'm doing. It's in bits and pieces. It's not going to be all at once because it's a journey. It doesn't, it, yeah. honestly, it would probably be as fun if it was all at once. I got to stop and see people. I got to do things. Yeah. Life is happening, Boom. you know, as I yeah. do this. <laughs> but what's also happening is I'm learning so much about my car, what I need in it, what I would do differently, like how to, you know, everything just by being an active participant in everything. It's one thing to fix up other people's cars, but it's another to drive yours and work on it and get to know it intimately like that. So it's yeah. been a really cool experience. You can't just drop it off. You can't just, uh, you know, you want to know what's going into it. It makes you love your car more. I can you never know? just drop it off. No. Yeah, just drop it <laughs> off or buy a car that's perfect. I want to buy a little car that's, that's a little imperfect and then see a work in progress, you know? Yeah, and put yourself into it a little bit, you know? Make yeah, yeah, put your own. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, Heather Thorne, I know you're also a, a fitness fanatic. I've seen you on like that uh, commercial with the twist thing and you do all that, yeah. Oh my God, I've done so many <laughs> fitness and commercials, um, CV. It's kind of funny to me because I'll tell you a really quick story is when I, before I moved to LA, I would watch those fitness and commercials and I said to my brother, I'm going to move to LA and I'm going to go and do that. And then, <laughs> but I felt like a really like big goal and, I, and not to say that it's not or anything, but like, I just moved so much past that, that it was just like one of the goals on yeah. the goal list. How many times did I say that? <laughs> you, better go, you better get that bottle back out again. <laughs> that wasn't even on purpose. I love those goals you have. Um, I did but, like I did. <laughs> Probably the same time, time you were doing infomercials and stuff. I did infomercials, but you think that's the goal until you do one, you get 500 bucks and then you see it run 500 times on TV and you don't get any more checks. You're like, Hey, I just yeah. got, I, I spent the 500 the next day, but they're still making money. So you don't understand like the business of a buyout. There's a lot of learning involved once that happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a lot of learning to go. Okay. Well, that was a good goal. Now what? That's, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. a lot of things. And I think that's important for everyone, you know, just as like, our goals are always changing. They're always yeah. evolving. You know, you put up, you, you, you write specific goals for yourself and then you make a strategy and then things change as life changes. And then you have to revisit that and reevaluate. I know a lot of people are doing that right now during this time when they have a little bit more time. That was like five goals. So we should at least take one drink. There's five goals. <laughs> <laughs> so Heather Storm. So I, I, we were talking about Judy, my producer actually sent like talking points. Not that I remember any of those, but uh, I think she said something about, did you have a, a really good experience with a fan from a show or a bad ex or an embarrassing experience? Oh, you know, I or have the other talking points I sent that I don't no, remember. You know, I have had a really cool experience, unexpected cool experience with a fan where I was signing autographs in Canfield, Ohio, um, at a car show there. And, you know, I had a line of people and I was just signing posters that I had brought there. Um, some people had hats or, or whatnot, or a little, or their t-shirt or something, which is super nice. And Daisy when Dukes, I do that, whatever. yeah, whatever they want to sign. I haven't signed any whatever. Daisy Dukes yet. You might be the first. <laughs> Um, and then this one guy came up and he was so excited and he had a group of people with him and he had printed out a huge, like, I don't know, like three foot, like laminated, not laminated, but, um, I'm not an expert in this type of stuff, <laughs> like a big post, not even a poster board. It was more like a picture. Like it yeah. was framed. It was like a big picture. That's why I'm trying to not, it was laminated it. so you could put it in the shower. 
No, it wasn't laminated, it was, but it was like a big printed picture with a frame around it that was like three three feet long or whatever. Yeah. And um, like, we're going to put that in the shop, not the shower. Um, okay. And, so, <laughs> or the shop shower. But it was just so, it was just really flattering and it just made me feel so good. And he's like, we love all the work that you're doing. And just, oh, cool. I was just so surprised and just, I don't know, it just sometimes... You know, you're just used to saying hi to people. And I mean, I always appreciate everybody that I talk to, but just some things suddenly you're like, wow, like I really made a difference in these people's lives enough for them to care this much to bring this poster up. And that, oh, that's good. I don't know, yeah. that's all to me is those are the moments in life that, you know, make a difference. So not that Very good. You just remind me of once I got a reality check, I was doing a, a book signing and I was somewhere in, in Kentucky, I think, when the Trans Am Diaries, my book came out and this girl comes up and she looked, and she looked like a cat lady, like she had 14 cats, you know, which is cool. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, do you want me to sign your book? And she's like, start asking me questions. She goes, so you've done comedy, blah, 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 and you've done this and that. I'm like, yeah. And she knew everything about my life. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And I'm, and I'm ready with my Sharpie. Like, who do you want me to make it out to? And she goes, well, I guess you don't look too bad for your age. And she walked away. And I'm still, <laughs> my Sharpie, she didn't even get a book. I'm like, okay, all right. She didn't buy a book. She didn't buy the book. She just came up to go. She knew somehow she knew all my information. She knew my bio. And she just wanted to talk to me. And then she walked away. And she she I'm needed like, the face to face that she knew so much about you. She's like, I just gotta see this guy. I yeah, yeah. I, yeah need to, like, I need to look in his eyes. I need to yeah. I need to do this thing. And then yeah. she did it. She left. I don't know what that means. <laughs> and I got up and started twerking with my Daisy Dukes and said, You're missing all this, lady. <laughs> go home to your 14 cats. Exactly, exactly. You're like, did I make this out to Cat Lady? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Heather Storm. I'm so glad. I thought you were stranded there for like the last month and I was worried about you. But you're good. You're chilling. Stranded is good. See, here's how I see it, Stevie. Like, even if I had to get stuck in a place, that's where that's where I'm supposed to be. It's all good. So That's where the party is. I like that attitude. <laughs> Are you driving the Mustang back to L.A.? I don't know when I'm going back to L.A. I don't know what I'm doing yet. I'm, on, I'm just on a... On a go by the flow basis free here. Spirit. Free I mean, LA is crazy. What am I going to do in LA right now? I mean, I'll let you know if things ramp up again. I don't think it's going to happen for a long time. That's what I mean. You're there in your house doing a YouTube show from your house, which is great. But I mean, <laughs> I'm in my double wide. That's, that's <laughs> one good thing about the quarantine. I think the networks are, are like shitting their pants right now because they're finding out people can, do, people can do things on their own. Oh, yeah. Organic, organically. We don't need them. We don't need them. I said it. Games. We don't need you. Goals. <laughs> it's our goal is to get rid of them. To not need Hollywood. <laughs> there you go. Well, Heather Storm, you're a rock star. Tell everybody where they can find you besides Corpus Christi. Don't come stalking her. <laughs> if you see my blue Mustang, feel free to say hi. <laughs> but don't stalk me and follow me. Don't, don't be weird. <laughs> Uh, you guys can find me though on my website heatherstorm.com. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Heather Storm LA, and on YouTube. You can also see um, my small town series, Drive Yourself Local, on YouTube. Just do dry YouTube, Drive Yourself Local. So there's lots of content up there, and I'm creating more day, day by day, and I'm drinking day by day too. So here we go. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you so Thanks, much. I'm glad you're safe. Glad the 65's getting the numbers matching transmission. Keep the numbers matching. It's going to be better than ever, really. I mean, I'm just excited because the, it, my car is going to run better than she's ever run. Please, so. please promise me you don't drive it back. Just put it, you know, on the, on the truck and fly back. Oh, no, back. I'm driving all around. Don't We're do driving. that. Come on. <laughs> be safe. All right, Heather Storm, thank you so much. Bye. Everybody, Heather Storm. <laughs> I'm going to get up and twerk again. Ah! Ain't gonna hurt nobody. Everybody, thank you for watching. Come on, get happy hour. That's a killer mixtape episode right there. That's just a little party mix for y'all. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, join us next Wednesday night. Come on, get happy hour every week. Tell your friends, like, subscribe, share it around the office. Put on your earphones like you're working, but really you could be laughing with us and grooving with us. And we're gonna take you out with something fun, something funky with my partner in crime, Judy yes, Sketch yes. Lewinson. Take them out. See you next time, y'all. See y'all. You're in the mix with Judy Lou.
Mix with Jilly Lou. Bring that back. Hey, DJ, bring that back. Bring that back.